Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. I'm so grateful that you guys are watching, subscribing and commenting on my channel. I really appreciate the support. In this video, I want to speak to you guys about how INFJs are afraid to question other people because we doubt ourselves so much. And even though we have this streak of self-confidence within us, we believe in ourselves, we believe in our journey, we, we are confident when we walk through the world a lot of times, this is, there is still a part of us, there's a niggle of self-doubt within us, perhaps a big self-doubt within us, that tells us that we're not good enough and everyone else around us must be right and we are wrong, right? I'll give you a quick example. It actually happened to me recently. Uh, a friend, not a friend, a colleague of mine, sent me a document it was a pdf document with certain numbers on it right so she had done some calculations and she sent it to me and i looked through it and instantaneously i looked through it and i felt like that doesn't seem right <laughs> i'm literally sitting there i'm looking at it and i'm like but i don't think that's right and so in the first few moments of that doubt i'm like no but it must be right she sent it to me she made it up and she thinks it's accurate, she thinks it's correct, it must be correct. So I spent at least 10 minutes staring at that document, trying to make it correct in my head, to try, trying to see all the different possibilities, trying to see all the combinations and permutations that could make that document correct, that could make that final figure correct, right? And so I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I could add this and this, but no, that doesn't still add up to this number. Maybe I could add that and that. No, that still doesn't add up to this number. And so after five, finally after 10 minutes, I'm like, all right, I've spent enough time on this. Like, obviously, this is not the right number. No matter what I look at, no matter how I tweak it, this is not the right number that we're supposed to be looking at. It's not the right end result. It's not the right figure, the end figure. And so it needs to be corrected. Now, of course, after that, I went to a spiral of madness where I'm thinking to myself, who am I to correct her? She probably knows better than me. What do I know? I don't know anything. This is new to me. I'm just a nobody. I'm not an expert. Why should I know better than her? I'm sure she corrected it. I'm sure she checked it. I'm sure she knows what's right. I'm sure I'm missing something. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, I'm sure I'm missing something, right? But I still had to send her an email because I was like, well, I can't let this go. What if it's wrong? I don't want us to be wrong. And, and I, don't want us, I don't want us to send something that is the wrong figure, right? And so I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, I'm like, all right, cool, let me just email her. And so I like girded my loins, if that's the right way to say it. I was like, all right, I could do this. And so I sat down, I, I created a perfect email. You know, I was like, all right, I, I don't want to be the kind of person that's pointing out that she's wrong. I don't want to say, you're wrong. <laughs> I would never say that. But I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be like, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're wrong. You're, everything you're doing is wrong. Why would you even send me this, right? So I was like, all right, I'm sorry. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I feel like I believe, you know, I made all those things that we do as INFJs because we don't want to directly say that figure is wrong. Check it again because I don't want to make a mistake. Basically, I dilly dallied around the issue and I said, I think maybe if you could, you know, check that figure again, that would be great. <laughs> I'm sure I made those facial expressions as well while I was writing that email. Anyways, so I finally crafted an email that was like, all right, please check that damn figure because I, I think it's wrong, right? But not in exactly in those words. And I sent it over to her and I literally had my heart bursting out of my, my chest. I was like, oh my God, I, why am I doing this? Do I have to? Why do I have to? Why do I have to be the one who has to look at it? Why, can't she, why couldn't she have checked it? And all of that stuff, right? Eventually I sent it, perfect, gone. I didn't have to worry about it. I was like, all right, let's just ignore it. Let's just ignore it. Don't think about it. It's fine. And then she came back and she was like, no, the figure is correct. And I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> oh no. So then I'm, I obviously go through it again. I go through the calculations again, like three billion times. I'm trying to check, please let it be right. Please let it be right. Of course it's still not right, right? And so I'm like, all right, all right. I'm gonna have to send her an, another email. And I'm li literally my heart is again bursting out of its chest. And I'm like, but why? And so again, I craft an email saying, could you explain to me how you got to that final figure? Because if I calculated it myself, it doesn't seem right. And I actually did the calculation for her in the email. It was a long email. And I kind of like, this and this is, this is how I calculated. And it should be this figure, I think. How did you get to this figure? I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. I just, I just want to check. And so I was like, I just want to check for my own purpose, just so that I know for next time kind of thing, right? So 
taking all the blame off of her and taking it all upon my shoulder. And so the finally, <laughs> she checked it again and she said, yes, it's wrong. And she corrected it based on my uh, calculations, correct, yeah? So cool, great. But this really showed me that, you know, from the moment that I realized that that figure was wrong to the moment where she realized that the figure was wrong, I still believed that I was wrong. I believed that I was wrong. I believed that it was me. I was a problem here, not them. They didn't make a mistake. I made the mistake. It was me. Everything in that scenario, everything that was wrong in that scenario was me. It was my calculations. It was my thinking. It was my, my everything. I was the wrong one. She wasn't wrong. I was wrong. Even though she had made the calculations wrong, even though at the end of it, I realized that she had made the calculations wrong, even then it was me that was wrong. And I felt terrible about bringing it up and saying to her that she was wrong and to making, making her realize that she was wrong and that, you know, I felt like our relationship is going to completely deteriorate after this because I pointed out to her that the figure was wrong, right? Now, this is a very minor situation. It's not like I'm calculating you know, how to send a space, a rocket into space or something like that. Like, it, no lives depended on it. It didn't really matter. It doesn't matter. It was just a figure and it was off by maybe $600 or something. It's not a big deal, right? It's fine. It's not, not going to create a crisis. It's okay, right? But there are certain situations when we have, when INSJs, I'm sure, are dealing with situations where if the figure wasn't correct, it would result in a loss of property or life or even worse than that, right? And at that moment in time, I'm sure the INFJ is like, okay, I have to do something about this, right? But still, there is this niggle of self-doubt within us, as I've said before. There is this voice inside of us that says, who are you to know what is actually correct or wrong? Who are you to know what the actual right figure is or the right item is? You don't know. You have no idea. You are nobody. You have no idea what the hell you're doing with your life. <laughs> Oh God, and why would you even know what the right answer is? You don't know, right? I actually talked about this in the past where I am brilliant at math. Now I'm not saying this to brag, I just am. It's just it, my parents, my dad is really good at math and I think I just inherited that gene from him or anyways, he used to teach me a lot of math when I was younger. He'd wake me up at five in the morning with like a stick in, by his side, be like, do your multiplication tables. At that point, I hated him. I was like, oh God, why do I have to get up at five in the morning? I'm eight years old why do i have to do this right now right now i realize that all of that work that he did with me made me brilliant at math so i always got like 99 or 100 and even in university i got almost a perfect uh, score on all of my math calculus exams i loved calculus it was so much fun anyways and so i'd always get the answer right and so sometimes a teacher the math teacher who was a male a brown male guy and he would look at me and be like all right she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about right but I would always have the answer right, and I'd always be the one who put her hand up, and she'd be like, I'm like, I have the answer, right? I have the right answer. And you'd always want to look at my sheet, be like, no, you don't have the right answer. You can't. You, look at you. <laughs> You're a chit of a girl. You're a brown little girl. How would you even know what the right answer is, right? But I always did have the right answer. And a lot of times I'd be like, I'd raise my hand and I'd give the right answer, but I would say it in such a soft way where I'd be like, I don't know, I think this is the right answer. I know it's the right answer, but I just feel like in oppos opposition to someone else, I believe that I would always be the wrong one, right? And because I was so soft-spoken, the person would be like, what, what did you say? Did you say this? No, that's not right. That, the real answer is six. You said five, right? I was like, no, I said six, and or whatever the answer might be. And he's like, oh, no, no, you said five. No, that's not right. It's six. And I'm like, oh, shit. And this happened to me so many times. You know, I'd say the right answer, not even just in math. I was in my MBA program and I was in this um, investment management course or something, related to investments. And I loved that course. It was so smart. And our teacher was really good as well, our professor. And I'd always raise my hand to answer the question, but he'd always not be able to hear me properly. And I'd always say, no, that's not the right answer. That's the right answer. And I was like, but that's what I said. <laughs> It's the freaking self-doubt that kills us. And a lot of times I'll be like, all right, fine, what the hell? Why should I even bother saying the answer? Because I'm not going to say it loud enough and they're not going to believe that I have the right answer anyways, right? And then when they would say the right answer because no one else got it and I had it in my head, I never said it out loud and they would say it the exact same way that I said it and I'd be like, shit, I should have said it. What's wrong with me? Why can I not just believe in myself? Why can't I just believe that I have the right answer, that I know the right things, that I have the right stuff. 
why can't I just believe in myself, right? Now, of course, these examples, are, are, are a lot of them are from my 20s and I had very little self-love and very little self-esteem at that point. Now, I have a lot more, <laughs> a lot more to say. I still am not there yet, right? Obviously, if I, had, if I had complete belief in myself, I wouldn't let this stupid figure be like, all right, no, you're wrong. This figure is, this is the way it's supposed to be. And that's it, that would be the end of the conversation. She would believe me because I would say it with some sort of confidence in myself, this compunction in myself that, that she'd be like, all right, yeah, I can't just believe her. She's so confident about her answer, right? That's where I want all INFJs to get to. I want us to get to a point where we sit and we say things to people and be like, oh yeah, you're right, absolutely right, because you're saying it with such confidence, you must confidence, you must be right. Now, a lot of times you, you might be just bullshitting, but that's okay. <laughs> I want us to get to a point where we believe in ourselves. Like, I want to get to that point myself, of course, where I believe that I know the answer. I believe I know the right things, especially when I do. Right? I'm not saying that we know everything, but there are certain areas in my life where I know what I'm doing in my life, right? <laughs> but I will let other people undermine me or make me disbelieve myself or doubt me. And on top of that, I'll doubt myself because of their doubt. And I don't want us to do that because it's, it's false. It's absolutely wrong. We don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to do that either to make them feel better about themselves or because we feel worse about ourselves. Either way, it doesn't matter. We don't need to do that anymore. We shouldn't be doing that anymore. And hopefully, this is a reminder for you guys to stop doing that as well, if you're doing that in your life right now. Hopefully you're not, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> Again, I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope I was able to explain myself to you in a way that made sense and that jived with you. If you guys have any questions at all, please message me anytime. And all of my contact information is in the description below. Again, I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.